would you say that, uh, and not taking away from all the efforts that are being made at COP26 and then the upcoming COP27, uh, that these conferences and dialogues make any real progress? Uh, because while there is a lot of awareness, I think at some level there's also cynicism and it's, this awareness has not been converted into the sense of urgency uh, because one feels that these events have become talk shops. Um, well, it does create awareness, as you have said, and I think uh, some of the panelists have also mentioned the importance of having this conversation. But uh, in a way, there has been uh, a fair bit of cynicism, as you have said, because I attended COP21, and COP21, I think, uh, was important for many reasons, because it was one of the successful COPs, because all the previous ones have been disappointing. And there had been one promise made. The promise was to get the climate fund the 100 billion that we're talking about. And as we speak, we're still short. We still find that there's a gap. And I think at the COP26, I think Mia Motley, actually she was very, very eloquent and actually she was very articulate in, in highlighting uh, the, the crisis that the developing countries are facing. Uh, one of the reasons uh, she actually rightly pointed out and uh, is the SDRs, the, uh, the special drawing rights that developing countries should access. And uh, we find that the climate change, the, the fund had not been capitalized, and there's still a gap. And the gap, as at November 2021, it was about 26 billion US dollars, or 21, or something like this. So this shows, uh, this is where I think the cynicism is coming in from developing countries, that the promises are not being met. And if we don't get access to this fund, how are developing countries going to be able to adapt? How are they going to get the tools? And one thing that I think many people, the conversation is missing somewhere, is that we are living in an interconnected world. And if the COVID has shown us anything, it has shown us how interconnected we are to each other and also to the environment. And this is, I think, something which has been missing in our conversation because as humans, we have taken ourselves out of the environment and yet we are very much part of it. And if you were to compress the 24 hours in one, well, the, the whole geological cycle in 24 hours, we find that as humans, we have existed for just five seconds before midnight. And just imagine the damage that we have done to this planet. So we are destroying the branch on which we are all sitting. And that is the question, that is the, the, that is the, 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 the statement that we have to make to our kids. What are we leaving them in terms of legacy when they'll have nothing? And to, yesterday I was going around uh, the city and I saw how we need to protect our soil. And in 30 years, there'll be no soil for us to farm on. And this is something that is not taken seriously. This is not something that is, of course, uh, the, the dollars are not ringing perhaps enough. But we need to look at our environment. We need to show our children that we are very much part of the ecosystem. And the sooner we come to terms with this, the better it's going to be for us. Right, and this, uh, this conversation, this summit is, I think, an effort uh, uh, in that direction. Uh, Divya, that, uh, since we're talking about the COP, I have to ask, and you represent the United Nations here, uh, do you think we need another mechanism, another platform uh, to come up with enforceable solutions? Because we understand uh, what ties the hands of UN and its bodies, and, and beyond a point, they can't do very much. And the problems and the disagreements remain, the politics remains, and every leader is going to be looking at what is happening at home, uh, and then looking at their international responsibility. So national interest versus international responsibility. Um, I think I also sort of referred to this point earlier, but in any global environmental challenge, I think there is, you know, um, there is only so much that an international mechanism can do when it comes to national action. And therefore, I wouldn't fault the mechanism. I would say the mechanism, uh, the mechanism, the, the success of the mechanism will, you know, as I said earlier, will depend on how invested we are in making it successful. And therefore, I wouldn't really say that we need a new mechanism. But what I would say is that, you know, unless we create incentives in the system for business, unless we create incentives in the system for markets to drive the transition and the change just by, you know, heavy-handed policies or interventions. Of course, policies are required, but heavy-handed diktats 
are not going to sort of you know push the transition that we require until the market absorbs it and the market pushes it so um, global mechanisms are are in my view there what we need is to strengthen market mechanisms which will drive the change that we want to see right